So the door is all finished and I'm super happy with it. You know when you make something and it just kind of works, you know what I mean? It's just a, such a nice feeling. So it's actually, as I say, it's a, a proper hidden door there. And then we've got the radiuses now. So I've got the screen, it's gonna continue along and come along a radius here. And then parallel to that, there's another radius which then joins back into this screen here. So I'm now marking out my templates to make my head and my sole plates. So I've got myself a sheet of ply, an off cut of ply, and I've made a trammel, which basically means a long straight stick. I've got an axis center there, which is just a screw, which screws straight into that bit of ply there. And then I've set the first radius with two screws here, which enables me to use the screws as cutting edges and pull it round. And you can see that it's actually giving me a really nicely scribed radius. I'm gonna use a jigsaw to actually cut those out. Now if I did want, if I wanted to, I could just get my router and attach it to this and set it all up outside. But to be honest, I know for a fact that the jigsaw will give us a nice radius. I'll take it just off that scribe line and I'll then use a nice sander to make it super, super smooth. Now, it's 70 mil wide. So I've now got a second screw at 70 mil there, you can see. And I'll just let this one up and let that one down once I've scribed the outside and I've got my, my radius. I'm gonna make it slightly longer because why not? Let's just make it a little bit longer so we can then plot that onto the ground here and make the relationship because I've got to taper it into nothing to there. So I've got to do that and make sure it's long enough. So I'm gonna make it fairly long and just make sure I've got enough in case I make a mistake. That's basically how we do it. And for the second radius, so I don't waste too much of this ply, I'll move the trammel up the board there because the radius is a lot smaller. It's around about a meter smaller, which represents the gap between the two screens there. So I'm gonna get on and mark all that out. And that's given us a lovely, a lovely template. It's almost perfect. Take that one up. Now the next one, we'll do the scoring. There, it's like a human CNC machine. Now we'll do the smaller radius. I'm just gonna reduce the length of the radius. So I'll just show you this as well. Interestingly, on the trammel, I've got my pivot point and I've put a saw cut there. So I put the saw cut in first, that does two things. When I screwed my screw in, it centered it. I also used the saw cut, because I'm working on my own, to hook my tape in to set out my radiuses. So the first radius I had was two meters 475 to the outside. So that's why this piece of trammel is doubled up. Now I can take the longer length off and I've put a reference mark there, should I wanna put it back on and move it. Just unscrew that, take it out of the way. So the next radius I've got is 1555. So hook my tape in there. So I'm gonna to measure to 15, 55, and then the width of my plate is 70 millimeters. So I take that back to 14, 85. Then I'm gonna square those across here. Here we go. And then I'm gonna screw my two screws in directly onto those lines. You wanna make sure you screw them fairly straight because they might come through half a millimeter or so out, but for what we're doing, it's absolutely perfect. So nice and straight. Screw those straight on the line. That gives us the exact score we need. Let one through. Let the other one through. Then what I'm gonna do, because I wanna make sure I don't waste this material, I'm gonna move this much closer to the striking line of that one. 
so we can get our radiuses much closer together to save on material. I'm just going to pinch that into there. And again, scribe away. So we've got this first screw much deeper than the second screw, which will start us off. You can see that the radiuses differ quite a lot because they're obviously on different centers. Give that a really good score. Move that screw up, put the other one down. And go again and that's all of our sort of scribing done and then I can cut them out with a jigsaw clean them up to make sure they're super smooth this street tech ply from Falcon Timber it's a poplar face ply and poplar is known for being a bit softer than a birch ply alternative or equivalent but it's actually in my favor you know and what I'm doing here is perfect, so... There we have it. There is our two radiuses ready for me to cut out. Perfect. And for that, we'll do that outside. Move the trammel in case we need it again. I'm going to bring out the six mil that I've created for the template and I've got a sheet of 18 here. And what I've done is I've cut it down and I've put those on top of each other. So when I lay my six mil over, I can cut through everything. So I'll attach the six mil to this. I'll screw exactly through the templates, through both of these so it all holds it together. And then I'll do one decent curve. I'll clean that curve up. I'll take the next curve off. I'll clean that one up and so on. So what I'm doing is instead of making the template and then recutting these again, I'm going to truss the jigsaw to make everything nice and flat because after all, they're just going to be set apart. So once I've cut them, the bottom and the top will be set apart and then the ribs will go between and they'll form those curving barrel vault, if you like, um, screens. So I'll bring that plywood out, fix it all through here so it's held, bring the jigsaw out. I'm going to position these blocks underneath so they don't interfere with my cutting and then we're going to see how well the jigsaw actually cuts them. What you have to be careful with the jigsaw is they sometimes do this, they sometimes wander. So if you get the setting right and a really nice sharp stiff jigsaw blade it's not too much of an issue. So there's the six mil on top. I'm going to, as I say, I'm going to fix it all the way through exactly where I'm going to cut them so everything stays together. So So that's it, that's all screwed up. I'm just gonna check that these screws are holding the bottom sheet at one corner here. Yeah, they've got it. So I'm gonna take off the first section. I've got these blocks underneath to make sure I keep away from the jigsaw blade. I'll put those in there, like so, that's it. And away we go. The jigsaw seemed to handle the job quite well. I did actually use a new blade for each cut because this Street Tech ply literally takes the edges off them. It's so good. So that's the first cut, if you like, the first edge. So I'll discard these two bits. So this is obviously the offcuts. And I'm gonna clean that edge up now. And as I work through, 
I'll clean this edge up while it's sort of on the board, it's a little bit more solid. I'm gonna use a combination of a sander with some really good like coarse grit and um, a spoke shave and my little plane as well, believe it or not, because you can actually take out some of the lumps and bumps. We haven't got to be too fussy because it's a really wide radius. So um, when you put the actual fingers around the, the slats, they'll smooth themselves out just naturally because it's about, it's about the journey as opposed to um, the finite. So you'd never read if you're sort of like a half a mil different from that face to that face. So I'm gonna do that now. I'm gonna clean that off, get a sander out here, give that a really good sanding around till I'm happy. And then we'll take the inside out, sand that up. But we'll leave them attached, obviously, to do all the setting out, any of the cuts that we've got to do, so they're exactly the same. Take off any sharp edges first with a little plane, believe it or not, on the external radius. It's just perfect. And because the sheet's still whole, it's nice and secure. And that's going to flatten it off nicely there. Yeah? Now we're going to hit that with the sander. Let's put some, let's put some heavy grit in it. Let's try a 40. Just really clean some of that off. So following a nice sanding, it was then time to repeat the process effectively and cut the next part of that particular sole plate. So I just used the jigsaw again and um, I've got a vacuum uh, quite close by. So every now and then as the dust gets a little bit too much, I sort of vacuum it off as well. But you can see um, how uh, good it was that jig jigsaw, battery jigsaw seems to do the trick, but it did dull the blades down pretty quick as I mentioned before. So I've got my first pair cut out and I'm just gonna smooth them out now. So on the internal, I'm gonna use a spoke shave. It will, it will actually fit straight in and clean them off. I've got a couple of sturdy blocks here to stop it from seesawing. And I'm just gonna take out all the high spots. And once I've done that, run the sander over again. We have to sit on that like a boat builder. There we go. We can feel the high spots. Just where the jigsaw does its own thing. It was quite a big ask for the jigsaw. We're doing two lots of ply and this street tech is, well, it's so solid. It's got so many plies in it. And you can feel it nice and smooth. Spin that round. We'll work on this end. So I'm not going to go too mad with that. I'm going to probably sand that out now. So now I've just got to repeat the process on the next radius and they're ready for sort of assembly or at least setting out. That's it. I've made my head plate, my sole plate for each one of the curved screens. And all I need to do now is shoot them in and then put together the actual screens, which actually is that simple because um, all we need to do is have all of the ribs, which are the sections that sort of join the slats front and back to, and I'll set the rods out take them on the bench and I'll fix those all through parallel. So I'll cut them all the same size. The floor is super flat. Southern Screed did this floor. And if you've seen that screeding video, you know that it's absolutely perfect. To the point where I laid on this uh, a floor, so it's a click together uh, LVT floor, 
and it says plus or minus sort of two millimeters over a meter or so and it went together beautifully that's when you know you've got a flat floor when you haven't had to latex it and you can get a flooring covering which is about eight millimeters with a micro tongue groove to snap together and go all over anyway that's about it for this part we've got the door the secret door done we've got the mirrors in and i'm super happy about it here's the secret door i mean it's just it's just madness isn't it look at that and when this screen comes across, so this will continue around the screen to halfway and it will continue around the screen to halfway there. I've made these sole plates long just so I've got a few attempts at getting them cut in really nicely. I can't wait to get it done. So join me when I'll finish the screens, put them in and basically clear this place up.